QRS morphology is a discriminator that uses the appearance of a QRS to discriminate between benign rhythms and potentially dangerous ventricular arrhythmias. Now the way it's able to do this is that really in the majority of SVTs or supraventricular arrhythmias, QRS will remain narrow. However, during ventricular arrhythmias, we might have a broad complex in VT or a very wild, chaotic and unusual QRS complex in VF. The QRS discriminator looks to recognise when the QRS has become so different that a ventricular arrhythmia is assumed. So if we think about VT, the reason we get a broad and wide complex is normally because we have a re-entrant circuit going on. This may be occurring around some scar tissue from an old um, myocardial infarction, an old heart attack, but either way, this circuit that is occurring is taking slightly longer to depolarize the myocardium than the depolarization would occur if the normal sinus pathways had been used, so through the AV node into the Hispokinji system. Now this is how it works. It takes a baseline template of a normal heartbeat. So immediately it becomes apparent this discriminator is not available to people with no underlying rhythm because we're unable to obtain a baseline to use as a reference point. So the template is recorded. Now during an arrhythmia, another template is recorded and the two are compared against one another. Like most of these discriminators, we have a threshold, a cutoff point. This can be anywhere from 70% to as high as 90%, 95%, depending on the manufacturer and on the patient. But the way it works is quite simple. In comparing the two templates, if they resemble each other by greater than 70%, then this is considered a normal rhythm or a supraventricular tachycardia. For that reason, therapy is withheld. Alternatively, if the rhythms are not 70% similar in their template, then therapy is delivered as a ventricular event is assumed. This is a really great discriminator, and this is one of the newer discriminators available to us. And it's really important to us as a discriminator now, because it's able to discriminate where other discriminators may fall short. Let me explain what I mean. If we take an SVT and a VT together in a single chamber defibrillator, we can see that actually the stability is the same, the heart rate is the same, and the onset could also be the same. They might have both started very abruptly. Now, the morphology discriminator at that point is the only discriminator available that is able to discriminate between a VT and an SVT because it recognises that the QRS is slightly different and actually only has a 48% match score in this example, so therapy would be delivered. The SVT, in contrast, had a 97% template match and therefore therapy wasn't delivered and therapy was correctly withheld. Also worth mentioning is that many of these devices regularly update their template and if they don't, a template should be recorded at every follow-up. Now the reason is, is that heart can remodel and the baseline QRS can change. If we didn't keep our template up to date, then in some patients, eventually, their intrinsic QRS would become so different to when the template was recorded that therapy could be inappropriately delivered during a sinus tachycardia or another SVT. So I hope you liked this video. It was taken from our CME accredited ICD Essentials course. Absolutely make sure to check it out and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected lessons in the course. If you want to learn how MedMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MedMastery video. So take care and I hope to talk to you soon.